24. Ah, uh, it's Godzilla! No, it's Harutagarn! What even is that name? Ah, well, you see, the character's name actually comes from the movie's co-producer, Seiji Hiruta, who... Japanese, got it. This villain barely makes the list on his looks, powers, and concept alone. He has absolutely no personality, nor motivation, beyond being a destructive, fire-breathing, terrifying creature that, while unique to this franchise, has very little lasting impact. Honestly, as with many of the DBZ movie villains, he'd likely be higher on this list if he had exhibited any character or emotion, but that's all left to Hoy, who, well, he's not bad, but... He's just a catalyst to move the plot along. Honestly, I love Verudagarn, but he's not a good villain. Just a cool concept that does well enough for the film he's in, exhibiting some interesting abilities and a horrifying design. Actually, his name even plays into that. See, the Garn in the name comes from the Japanese onomatopoeia. Also, he gets defeated in the most infuriating way possible, negating most of the climax and development for other characters. Dragon Fist is pretty cool, though. Oh, f yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. 23. But the Big Getty Star allowed him to cheat low rankings. How could this be? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we wanted to start with the joke because some of you are probably pissed. If some of you remember our last list, our opinions on the Cooler films lay somewhere firmly around middling, with Cooler himself not really shining as brightly as his canonical brother. While his personality is less flowery and condescending than Frieza, making him less of a whole hog ripoff, he also loses a lot of what made his brother an amazing villain, leaving him... Well, let's go over a checklist of what Cooler accomplishes, shall we? It crashes a picnic? Check. Enslaves a race of pacifists? Check. Fails to kill a single person? Check. The only thing Cooler actually kills, Goku revives. Live on, Toriyama. The one thing Cooler definitely brings to the table, however, are his designs. His initial look is reminiscent of Frieza, but his transformed state is brilliantly designed, intimidating as hell, and at least is slightly more interesting than his dad. It is a neat idea to explore more of Frieza's family tree, but following a near-fatal battle on an exploding planet, Cooler pales in comparison to his younger brother as a villain. Further, his Metacooler appearance manages to be both simple and effective. He also manufactures an entire army of himself because, you know, if you want something done right, do it yourselves. But what does he do with his new clone army? He takes over New Namek. You know, the cheaper version of the entire planet his brother destroyed. Taking over Namek again. Oh, come on, there's gotta be another planet out there that you can exploit for something more than cabbage. Cooler demonstrates a few unique moves and has some great fight scenes in his first movie, but his lame personality and stupid cloning scheme keep him from the upper echelon of Dragon Ball villains. Looks like it's hip to be square, cause it ain't great to be cooler. 22. Hey, what's, what's Boo doing so low on this list? <gasps> Yeah, yeah, he's a ripoff of Boo. We were pretty blatant about that last year. But now let's talk about what makes Janemba work. His design can be a bit busy, but overall it's Valentine's Day inspired color scheme and demonic motif, paired with one of the coolest weapons in Dragon Ball, already help him to stand out. But combine that with some of the coolest techniques in the franchise, including phasing in and out of dimensions via Lego block teleportation, portal punching, and the ability to imbue matter with his own evil energy to create weapons of deadly precision. And you have a character that would have made the top 10 if he hadn't been a shameless ripoff of a better villain and had, you know, the slightest hint of personality. And a bigger vocabulary than a Pokemon. That being said, even Fajinemba's design is fascinating. Oh, and uh, he kind of opened a portal to hell, bringing back every other villain in Dragon Ball history. Including Goku's most monstrous dictator rival, Hitler. Make sure to play Dragon Ball Z Boo's Fuhrer on the GBA for more info. He's also the only villain outside of GT to require Vegeta and Goku to set aside their differences and combine their powers via fusion dance to put him down. Go, go, Gadget Gogeta. Ah, <sighs> Janemba. If only you were more than a pretty face, maybe we could have had something. 21. Oh god, do we have to do this? Kaiser, get over it. GT happened. Did it though? As the first entry into DB Sember representing the GT canon, we're starting with the last villains introduced. The Shadow Dragons. Conjured from the abused titular Dragon Balls, these seven characters embody the seven balls as anthropomorphic dragons, each with their own distinct personalities, designs, and set of abilities. Oh yeah, real distinct. By the way, how are those personalities? Real diverse character sheets here, 
is evil. Also dragon, mole, question mark? Come on, Kaiser, moles are like dragons of the earth. Oh, yeah, and frogs are the dragons of the ocean. Oh, wait, that's just dragons. Out of the seven that are presented, only three of them are truly intimidating and effective. That being said, they're actually as high on this list as they are by concept alone. Yeah, actually, I'd happily praise that part. Much as with a lot of GT, the concepts presented are fascinating and tantalizing, but their execution falls short. The overuse of the Dragon Balls over the last 30 years has corrupted them, releasing a force of destruction that perverts the cornerstone of the entire series, turning their prized MacGuffin into their final challenge. How could you go wrong? We'll give it to Toei Animation for making these characters stand out with different designs and powers that make them unique. But at this point in the series, it comes off as tiresome and boring when most of them don't feel like a legitimate threat. Sin Shenron, who becomes Omega Shenron, feels absolutely no different from every villain before him. His motivation is fascinating, but it does nothing to inform his actions. He's just evil for evil's sake, and what started as karma just becomes cliché. Out of the dragons, Nova and Ice are easily the most complex characters of them all, and certainly do well to give depth to the plot and the events that unfold. Unfortunately, near the end, they are absorbed, forgotten, and were left with an unsatisfying final boss. That being said, Omega Shenron brings about many spectacular events, such as Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and the Universal Spirit Bomb. So while the dragons themselves might have been disappointing, they certainly made for some developments. Also, they lead into the ending of GT, which we as a group wholeheartedly believe is the best ending the franchise has received so far. So, brownie points there. So, to close, Super 17 didn't even make the list. See what baby bitches! 20. Evil scientist brain in a jar and his robot companion. Before Jiro and Android 19. Those familiar with last year's DB Sember list have already seen the bountiful comparisons to be made with Dr. Jiro and his androids. But we're going to review this terrifying duo on their own merits. The exceptionally cool part about them is how unique their concepts and motivation are in comparison to everything that came before them. The plot of capturing Goku and replacing his brain to become both the strongest and smartest man in the world is fascinating and gives everything this dark sci-fi tinge that radiates particularly well with the visuals and music in this film. Unfortunately, while their concept certainly ranks them high for us personally, their execution lacks personality. Kochin is a treat to watch because of how over-the-top dastardly he behaves throughout the film, but he's really only made that much better by comparison as Dr. Wheelow himself is... A brain in a jar who wants to control the world because he's apparently super de duper smart and junk. While he's visually captivating with his grotesque design and concept, he's not supported much outside of his quest for world domination via Goku's body. And Kochin is just a right-hand man bot who, while kooky and malicious, lacks any nuance. Although a built-in Gatling gun in the arm definitely makes him stand high up on the list as far as minions go. All in all, perfectly serviceable, if not underdeveloped, villains that should have set the standard for others to follow. Should have, but didn't. Guess who else isn't on the list? 19. Zarbon, Dodoria, and the General Frieza forces wouldn't have made this list on their own, but as a collective, they helped to propel Dragon Ball to new sci-fi inspired heights with their designs, personalities, and overwhelming strength. Well, overwhelming in comparison to our heroes. This isn't the first time we've seen such a gap in power between the minions and the good guys. But this extreme puts Gohan, Krillin, and even Vegeta on the defense at all times. Well, until Vegeta jobs both the Doria and Zarbon, while still being forces to be reckoned with in their own right, they exist primarily to emphasize how terrifying Frieza must be. Also to give Vegeta a ladder to climb, he burns through each of them with ease, with the only hiccup being Zarbon's transformation. But Zarbon's transformation exists not only to give Vegeta conflict, but also to introduce a mechanic that would very quickly become a staple of the franchise. That's right, kids. Transformations all basically started with Zarbon. Unless we count the Uzaru, and that's its own ball of wax. Really though, it's the interactions these villains get with others that help flesh out Frieza's presence as a villain. Their deconstruction of the elite Namekian fighters is a level of brutality rarely seen in the franchise. It's impossible to ignore just how unique and striking their designs are. The Saiyan uniforms work exceptionally well as standard soldier attire for Frieza's men. Zarbon's pretty boy look belying his beastly true form is a great contrast. And Dodoria! Look at this spiky evil bastard! He looks exactly like the guy who would kill a kid then snap his grandfather's neck. But as they are in fact minions, it's no surprise that their ranking would fall beneath their masters. But that doesn't mean they didn't leave a heck of an impact on the franchise as a whole. 
Wait, we completely forgot somebody! Oh crap, yeah, how can we talk about the Frieza Forces without bringing up its most memorable member? Ah, Pool! Give it up for a Pool, everyone! 